in that vision, I saw a man coming from that w- that way, and he was dressed like uh, uh, they show Jesus dressed on the cross. As he, he came closer, I looked at his eyes. He, I felt like his eyes had suffered so much. However, suddenly he opened up his arm and he asked me to go to him. And I could not believe. It was as if they had given me the whole world. I ran to him like crazy. I took round his neck and I said, you know, I don't care where you go, but wherever you go, I will be hanging from your neck. It was amazing. I cannot tell you. I felt like like a new person. The other person died. I mean, what happened to the other person? I could not explain it. سلام خوش آمدید اهلا و سهلا بكم اعزائي المشاهدين في برنامج رحلة مسلم الى الرجاء hello and welcome to our program a muslim journey to hope my name is muhammad saeed like many of you i was born and raised into a muslim family in an islamic culture since i was young i loved and revered allah my mother implanted in me a deep reverence to Allah and I learned that Allah had 99 names in Islam but the most important name is missing it is love God is love this is what this series is all about the love of God sharing with you real stories and testimonies from former Muslims who like me have become Christians through the love of God We know that some of what you hear may disturb you. It may cause you to tune us out and not listen. But we hope and pray that you will truly listen with an open heart and mind what we share with you about the love of God, the real joy, and the real hope that you never ever had before. But you can have in Jesus. Today's story involves a Middle Eastern woman who witnessed an unconditional love that fascinated her so much that she was led to learn more about Jesus Christ. Here is her story. I grew up in a in a Muslim environment and um, We didn't talk very much about God uh, because in my home, God was far away and we had to be respectful of Him. However, we we never really talked to God or it was not a personal God. We knew, all of us, that God had created us, there was a God, and uh, if we did something wrong, He would punish us. And if we did something good, maybe or maybe not, he, he, He would reward us. One day I was, um, I felt like I was unfairly punished by my mother. I didn't do anything wrong. And she she asked me to go to the corner of the room after I was punished. And I didn't know. I just wanted to climb all the walls and everything. And I felt it was so unfair. And suddenly I heard a voice who told me, Hey, Shireen, Shireen, it's okay. It's your mom. Just love her. Everything will be fine. And I, I, I started to hearing this voice, and I just uh, felt peace. Just peace came over me, and I just forgot, forgot about all that punishment and everything. And I, so I personally, I was used to call that voice my God, and my God was in the corner of the room. That was all I knew. Otherwise, my, my mom and dad's God, they, it was far away, and it, if he would do something wrong, uh, he would come and punish us. So this was how I, um, I grew up. There were a lot of things happening around us in our country, and there was a revolution and everything, and I was in the middle of it. And um, therefore, for my own safety, they uh, decided to send me to France to study and uh, to finish up the high school and to go to university there. 
somehow, uh, miraculously, I ended up in a convent together with nuns and priests, and I was the only one who was not, a, you know, who did not know Christ. And, uh, you know, I was just observing those people who were serving me, who had not done anything. Uh, you know, I did not even pay them. I was living with them. They were preparing my meals like as if I was a princess, and they were talking to me. And, uh, you know, I really, um, that was the first time in my life, you know, after, uh, you know, my parents who had given me the unconditional love, these people were first people who had given me unconditional love, and I could not understand that. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to know what, what was going on in their mind, in their heart and everything. And uh, that was how, how I got to hear about Jesus. Not that they evangelized me, but that I myself, on the back of the convent, there was some meetings, and I asked to be in those meetings, and there they had Bible studies, and they were talking about Jesus, and so on. Now, I did not know, as I looked at my dictionary, Jesus, uh, for us, it looked like I knew about him. He was a prophet. And... Uh, uh, at the end of the Bible study, they told me that Jesus was Son of God. And that did not really seem very um, intelligent to me. However, I looked at them, and they were mostly pro pro professors at universities, very highly educated people in those Bible studies and everything. So that made me even think more about maybe, you know, maybe not everybody here is crazy. Maybe, maybe I should investigate more and to know more about Jesus. And, uh, you know, I mm, put almost God to test. And I, uh, I at, the, at the start, it was difficult for me to call God as Father, Jesus, Son of God, and, and so on. It, nothing made sense to me, actually. But, you know, because of the unconditional love that I was receiving every single day, although I was a naughty girl, I did lots of wrong things, and I did all the wrong things of the world, and still they were smiling and showing me grace, and they loved me. I said, wow, even if my mother had been there, I would have received some punishment. And they don't even want to punish me. I mean, I was fascinated with them. I thought, wow, this is, you know, uh, I just have to find out about this mystery. And the more I got to know about Jesus and whatever he did, I was fascinated with him, with this, his character, and I wanted to become like him. My uh, way of thinking was a little bit like Jesus. You know, he had come to save the world. I want to do the same. I, I wanted to go and save the world. And I called Jesus as my favorite man. He was not really my God, but he was mostly my favorite man. And so um, this was how I had it until a um, series of events and miracles happened where I was directed to Norway, in north of Europe. And I ended up in a Lutheran church there. And I discovered more about Jesus there. And, uh, you know, at and the unconditional love. For me, there, um, I converted to Christianity. However, you know, for me, it was just like changing religion. Still, I, I felt like I had not given my heart to Jesus. Um, uh, so, because I always, my, my way of thinking was that I came from a society where they ignored women where they disrespected women, but women were inferior. So by going and, uh, you know, just trying to become like Jesus and trying to do uh, like other Christians, I could become a better person. Um, until I uh, came to a point in my life where I was, uh, I had a lots of problems and I felt like there was no way out for me. As I was crying and I didn't know whom to cry to, you know, I had a cross in the corner of the room, I had the Bible, but it was there. And suddenly I fainted there and I had a very, very strong vision. And this was, um, in that vision, I saw a man coming from that, w that way and he was dressed like, uh, they showed Jesus dressed on the cross. And everybody had, had raised their hands and I was in the third row. And uh, uh, everybody raised their hands and they wanted to touch him and he let himself be touched. And suddenly I cried and I said, Oh Father Jesus, please come and help me. 
And I, it, in, in that vision, it didn't seem like he heard me, but he came closer and closer. As, his, as he came closer, I just looked at his eyes. The only thing I wanted to know, if he was mad at me. You know, it, in a Muslim, uh, the Muslim way of thinking is that, you know, you, you are not really a sinner until you have really sinned and done something wrong. And so that was for me the first time standing in front of God and feeling like I was a sinner and I really did not deserve to be forgiven. That was how I stood in front of him in that vision. And I was just looking, just looking and seeking in his eyes if, if he, there was a, a way he could forgive me from what had happened. And I didn't know what had happened. However, can you forgive me in this situation? Is there any way out? And he... As he, he came closer, I looked at his eyes. He, I felt like his eyes had suffered so much. However, suddenly he opened up his arm and he asked me to go to him. And I could not believe. It was as if they had given me the whole world. I ran to him like crazy. I took round his neck and I said, you know, I don't care where you go, but wherever you go, I will be hanging from your neck. As I opened my eyes, I had the Bible right here, and uh, uh, I was pretty scared when I opened my eyes, actually, and uh, I was just trembling, and I didn't know what to do, what, what actually happened. I was just trying to explain to myself what happened, and uh, and when I remembered the vision, uh, and then I, I said that to, to one of my Christian friends, he said that, well, that was the first time you really repented, and you know, I think you've got saved. And the, the most amazing thing was that everything that I hated before, I liked now. And everything that, that I liked before, I hated now. You know, all the worldly music and so on did not make sense. And when even reading the Bible, uh, well, I had the Bible right next to me. So I, as I opened it, it was as if the words meant something else. It was something, some cover from my eyes that was taken away. I could see and I could understand the Word of God. And it, it was amazing, I cannot tell you. I, I felt like, like a new person. The other person died. I mean, what happened to the other person? I could not explain it. it I am a new person who can enjoy and who can see all the opportunities uh, and everything. I remember the God at the corner of the room, the, the, the voice that was already talking to me then, the voice that that was uh, giving me peace. And they said that, God, will you give peace, peace that is beyond our understanding. And uh, uh, s suddenly, you know, everything uh, fall uh, in the right place, you know, just I felt like, wow, so he was that and he did this and uh, it, it, it felt like a plan that uh, he really wa wanted me to be saved. And uh, in spite of the situations, uh, you know, every, he used the, every difficult situation to um, make himself known to me and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very privileged to know Jesus today. This is a person that you can talk to and uh, you really want to have the Spirit of God in your life to guide you because otherwise your life does not make sense at all. And you, you would want a God who empowers you. You would want a God who, who gives you vis wisdom. You really would want that than a God who just sits there and observes you. Oh, you did this, you're going to be punished. I'm not sure if you're going to, to, to heaven or you, you're going to go to, to the opposite side. Uh, you know, you would want a God who, who really give you unconditionally, abundantly his love. That's what you would want to have. I mean, it's not even to be compared with any religion or any type of faith. Understanding unconditional love was something uh, very important, something very important. And many times as I myself approached uh, a Muslim friend, it has been like uh, I understood for them, it was like, oh, she wants to make us the member of her church. She wants us to do this. That's why she's doing that. So uh, 
I, I really didn't want it, this to be only an advertisement for something. That's something be, you do this because of that. But just do this because your life is going to change. You're, you're going to see all the possibilities that you have. You're going to see the uh, God's plan for your life, the purpose of God for your life. You're, you're going to enjoy your life, even if you are in difficulties. You're going to have. Uh, uh, you, you're going to see your possibilities, even when 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 the world around you thinks that everything is lost you still see the light because you have hope you have the hope that that is and no nobody can take that from you real needs real experiences of real life nothing speaks to the heart but those words that come out of the heart so let's put aside human philosophy and listen to the heart's needs. The corner of the room, oh, what a place. High, cold walls, plain and blank. What moments dry and bitter. How many times did you get caught in life's corners? What really matters most is not for how long and how many times, but what was the outcome of those moments? Did they promote in you hatred and bitterness, or did you listen to the voice of life like Suhair? She was there, and there she listened to the voice of God, who did inspire in her life, love, and even unconditional love. Unconditional love, where can we find it? Who can give it? How many times have you experienced unconditional love? Suhair needed it. She longed for it for many years. And I did also. At last, she found it and it changed her life. Have you found it? My mother loved me but when she heard that I accepted Jesus as my personal savior, she told me, in my records, you are dead. But on the other hand, I can't forget the Lord's words, his promise in Isaiah chapter 49, verses 15 to 16. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on, on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. At times similar to Suhair's, when I did wrong, I used to think that Allah would come and punish me. But when I used to do good, Allah may or may not reward me. What a life! So her mother punished her for her mistakes and maybe unfairly, but God told her to still love her mother. Later, her life changed because of the unconditional love she felt, and later still, received at the convent during her stay. She was fascinated with that mystery, and so the person of Jesus became her favorite friend. After salvation, I changed and like Suhair, I now, I now love what I had hated and hate what I lusted after. The old person in me died, while the new one is different because of the continuous feeding of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit, it's God's Spirit that dwells in us and speaks to us. This same Spirit of God gave me peace beyond understanding and keeps inspiring in me the unconditional love. Do you have hope, a hope that no one can take away? Let me quote you even from the Quran. Let us see who is our advocate, the one that can ensure us a life of hope. From Surat An-Nisa, Ayah 1171. إنما المسيح عيسى ابن مريم رسول الله وكلمته ألقاها إلى مريم وروح منه. Well, it is he who was appointed from God and was accepted before him, the one who is his word and of his spirit. 
Further, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 110, reads, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ أُذْكُرْ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى وَالِدَتُكَ إِذْ أَيَّتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلَ وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِي فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهَا فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي Then will God say O Jesus, the son of Mary, recant my favor on thee and to thy mother. Behold, I strengthen thee with the Holy Spirit. So thou didst speak to the people in childhood and in maturity, and create a bird from clay. Thou breathe into it, and it becomes bird, and heal the leper, and raise the dead. These verses from the Quran show God as the speaker, Jesus in the flesh, and the Holy Spirit, giving Jesus the ability to know everything, the creative power, and the raising of the dead. These abilities and attributes have exclusively characterized the person of Jesus Christ alone. None of the angels were were given any of these attributes, such as raising the dead. In Surah Al-Umran, Ayah 49, it reads, إِنِّي أَخْلِقُ لَكُمْ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَإِبْرُئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَسَ وَأُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَأُنْبِئُكُمْ بِمَا تَأْكُلُونَ وَمَا تَدَّخِرُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ I create for you from clay as I breathe in it, and it comes to life. And I cure the blind and leper and raise the dead by the grace of God and tell you of what you eat and keep in your household. So this proves to us from the Quran that Jesus knows the future and all hidden things. Interestingly, we also see in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 109, Thou only, thou art the knower of things hidden. What shadow of truth can we notice here? These abilities were not given to Gabriel or Seraphiel or Moses or Abraham or the prophets on earth. Further, Because God strengthened him by the Holy Spirit, it is indicative that this Spirit is divine and he is the divine nature. The Spirit is holy and blessed, and so the person is blessed. They are all of the blessed God of his nature. I do worship one God and none other. I come before him, and with me is a priest, an intercessor, and an advocate appointed from God. His name is Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. All that you've seen and heard today is the outcome of the unconditional love of God, love that never changes. It is eternal love because it is the nature of God. It is the plan of God that all may get saved and know the truth, al-haq. In the first letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, it says, This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Also in Romans, chapter 5, verse 8. It is written, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This great will of his is to all mankind, every walk and color. It showed me what kind of love he has for me too, as it is for you in person, and made me so eager to know him and his plan for my personal life. It created such longing in me to have a personal relationship with the Almighty God. Would you want that for your life too? 
give Jesus the chance to move, to move you from the corner of the room into the freedom of his person of unconditional love. If you'd like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, into your heart, and into your mind and soul, just take a moment to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. You are the Savior of the entire world. Come into my heart and cleanse me from my sins and fill me with the Holy Spirit. I need you to be my master, to be the master of my life. I know that you are the Son of God and I ask you to come into my life. Say this simple prayer of faith so that you can walk with Jesus Christ in a new life, in new joy, in new hope, and new peace. He will reveal himself to you. Just pray this simple prayer, and he will. We would like to encourage you in your decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or if you still have questions, please feel free to log on to our website. We will have material in both English and Arabic that will answer some of your questions about coming to the Lord. If you made that decision today, you will find some literature that will encourage you in your walk, books, other testimonies, basic questions and answers about the Christian faith. You can also email us any questions, thoughts or concerns that you may have. So please just log on to our website at www.muslimjourneytohope.com We hope and pray that this will encourage you in your new walk in Christ. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you will join us again next time. May God be with you and bless you. Let us pray for you, all of our viewers of this show and Muslims throughout the world. Ya Rab, nashkurak min amaq al-qalb la'ajil kalimatak al-wadiha likul insan la'annak taqool ha'ana waqif ala bab wa aqra' in sami' ahad sawti ati ilayh وأتعشى ما هو يكون معي نشكرك لأن تقول I have carved you on the palm of my hand if a mother shall forsake her thee her child I will not forsake thee Lord I heard it from my own mother she said to me you are dead but I know I'm alive in you and I love you Father thank you for allowing me to be one of your children. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into your family, the family of God. Lord, hear out my heart cry to you to bring all my people, the Muslim people, to you. And I might may see them one day when I see you face to face. Thank you, Lord.